Hello, it's Oga from Art is Artist. Today, the new topic, UVW map modifier. Don't underestimate this. Even if you are in the field for a while, you may not know some of the options I'm going to show you. Let's jump straight into the software. I've prepared some standard objects before. Let's start from applying the material. I've created the material. Nothing fancy, only brick texture in a diffuse slot. We cannot see the material preview, so we need to choose the option Show Shaded Material in the viewport. Now we need to apply a UVW map modifier to be sure that the texture is mapped correctly. But before we start setting parameters, let me show you what this modifier can do for you. I choose a box for now, it will be easier to see the changes. UVW map modifier has a sublevel called Gizmo. If you click on the name, you'll be able to control the gizmo of the mapping. So you can manually move the gizmo or scale or rotate. This can be really useful in case you want to adjust mapping really quickly. I delete this and apply a new modifier one more time to explain to you other options. Now I'll show you some mapping groups which I use during creating visualizations. Let's start from Planner. In this example, the map is projected from a single plane flat against the object, because the texture is two-dimensional. It's like projecting a slide, for example on the wall. You can see that in our case the texture is mapped only on the top and bottom side of the box. The planar mapping is used mostly on the flat surfaces, like planes. Ok, now let's apply the material to the other objects. Let's apply the UVW map modifier to the cylinder. Here, we need to change the mapping group to cylindrical. You can see that in this case the map is wrapped around the object. You probably noticed that the top and the bottom of the cylinder are not mapped. In order to apply the mapping there, we need to check the option cap. This way, planar mapping is applied on the top and bottom part of the cylinder. Next one, spherical. As the name says, it is used for objects that are roughly spherical in shape. It surrounds the object around and meets at the sphere's poles. Now, box mapping. Probably the most common one. It projects the texture from the six sides of the box. Each side projects as a planar map. And the last one I want to show you is the face mapping. You can see that this box has some segments. I apply the modifier. I make the edges visible. This mapping applies a copy of the map to every face of an object. You can notice that as I'm changing the number of segments in the box, the mapping is changing as well. The map is being adjusted depending on the amount of the division. I delete these objects as I don't need them anymore. Now I show you the other options. Here you can change the parameters of the mapping. length width and height. You can also change the tiling here. You can see that the tiling is getting bigger in one direction, so the texture is getting squeezed and the other way. You can also reverse the image about the given axis. Now I show you how to use this, but first Let's set the mapping as it was before. I copy the box. In the new one, I turn on the Rewards Map Size option. I open the Material Editor and copy the material. Let's apply this new material to the next box. To use the Reward Mapping option, you need to turn on this option both in Material and in Mapping. 
if you type the same parameters as we have in the old box, we'll get the same result. So basically, you can choose if you want to change these parameters inside the map or in the modifier. But be aware that if you have the real world map size on, some of the options in the modifier doesn't work. I'll explain the map channel later. First, I'd like to show you these options. You can select one of these to flip the alignment of the mapping gizmo. All good so far? I hope so. By using the manipulate option, you can change parameters manually in the viewport. I've never really used it, but it's good to know that it's there. Now let me show you some other options. Fit will adjust the gizmo to the object's extent. Center moves the center of the modifier gizmo to the center of the object. Bitmap Fit allows you to choose the image and it sets the aspect ratio of this image. You can see that this is the different proportion than our original map. This one is rectangular. So you can see from the top view that this is the ratio of the image we've chosen. For a cylinder, for instance, it's scaled to match the bitmap. By choosing normal align, you can manually choose the XY plane of the gizmo by clicking on the surface of the object. Really helpful option. View align changes the orientation of the mapping gizmo to the face of the active viewport. Left and front. Region fit allows you to manually set the region of the mapping gizmo in the viewport. The orientation of the gizmo is not affected though. Here we can reset the changes of the gizmo with it. Now I show you the enquire option. But first I need to create the box. I apply the material as well and I apply the modifier. You can see that parameters are different here. There are two options. If you choose absolute, it will position the gizmo exactly on the top of the mapping gizmo of the object we pick. If you choose relative instead, the gizmo is positioned over the selected object. Okay, now I show you how to correctly map the texture. Let's do this with the brick example. This is the texture I use in the material. Most of the time, if you are familiar with the 3D software, you will set up the parameters roughly and don't calculate the exact values. But if you are a beginner, it's really hard to do this this way. So I show you how to practice it. Standard brick will have around 6-7 cm height. You can calculate that there are 56 bricks here. So to know what is the real size of this, we just need to multiply these two values. It doesn't need to be perfect, just roughly. With the grouts, it will be around 400 cm. So this is the value we need to set in UVW mapping. Let's apply the UVW map modifier and let's choose the box. Now let's type the value we estimated. Because my scene is in millimeters, I need to type 4000. We can quickly check if our mapping is correct by drawing the plane. Great! 
It's as we estimated at the beginning. Now, let me show you one trick. Let's add some segments to our box. If you want to have different UVW mapping within one object, for example, different scales on different polygons or elements, you can use this technique. Let's apply an Edit Poly modifier. Select polygons that you want to have a different scale of mapping. Now apply the UVW map and change parameters. Let's say we want this four times smaller. Here we go. Let's try it again. Now, twice bigger. There is one more thing I love to show you. Let's create a box. I create a mix map. So here we have a situation that we probably want to have different tiling for these maps. You can see that when we are adding the UVW map on the fire, it automatically changes the mapping for all maps in the material applied for this object. And here is the situation when we use channels. So you can notice that we have the same channel in the modifier and all the bitmaps. Now we need to change the channel. Let's say for two. If you turn on visibility of the map in the preview, you can see that the current mapping doesn't work here. So let's apply an additional modifier. Now we need to change the channel. You can see that the mapping has changed in the mix map, but it stays the same in the bricks texture. Let's say we want this smaller. You can see that these mappings don't affect each other. Great! If some of these options or techniques are new for you, I suggest you to try them by yourself. Okay, I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching and also don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video!